So we are live once again. In today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, comics <clears throat> getting blocked by Dan Slot for the second time without writing anything to the man. First time, not writing anything to him, blocked. Second time, not writing anything to him, blocked. So <laughs> we're going to talk about Crazy Dan and his. Uh, mass of people on Twitter. How is Marvel in business when you hire a writer who blocks people who doesn't like interacting with people <laughs> on Twitter? So, anyway, we're going to play the intro. We're going to kick it off and see where this episode goes. So, sit back. Relax, and here's the intro. wait for tomorrow, because, you know, tomorrow's Wednesday, of course, and, of course, Wednesday, uh, new comics, um, but also, I am getting a, uh, memory card delivered for my laptop. I had to ask this one, if, I want to see on Twitter, hopefully, uh, not on Twitter, but, um, I'm on Twitter at the one Bugs Bunny, um, and also, I am on, of course, Instagram at Josh of Gotham, and so if you have an HP stream laptop, and you have like the low disk space and memory thing, can you please message me? <laughs> <laughs> I need, I, I bought a memory card, and, um... And I need, like, um... I want to know if the memory card is, like, gonna work. Because I spent 18 bucks on the fucking thing, and I... And I need to know if it works. I bought a... Kelp memory card. Um... I bought a Kelp memory card. 32 gigabyte SD card, class 10 memory, capability with HP stream. Hopefully the fucking thing works. Cause I am sick and tired of getting like updates of low disk space and it's like you know, it's like I fucking clean the thing and it it gets annoying that I get like this information of low disk space and it's like, you know, I fucking cleaned it. I don't know. I don't know what else there to do. <laughs> what else to do there? You know, I I use this laptop to like write my my stories. I write you know comic book stories, um, and I do the podcast on there. So I need I need to know like if 
it works because <clears throat> you know <laughs> if not then I'm gonna have to like deal with it until like I have enough money to buy a new laptop to do show shit you know so hopefully fingers crossed the thing works so it's kind of annoying So, ugh, and I, I haven't had a soda in a while, and I burped. So anyway, Dan Slot, Dan Slot. He wrote Spider-Man. He wrote, uh, I think, the Fantastic Four. Uh, I think I think he's on Iron Man now. He's writing Iron Man. I have never interacted with Dan. I never wrote anything to him on Twitter. Never liked the post. Never, never wrote anything to this man. And he, he of course is you know the Fantastic Four writer, Iron Man I think, uh, Spider Man, basically a lot of Marvel stuff for for Marvel. And I. Again, never interacted with this dude on Twitter, Instagram. I don't, I don't, I don't know if he has Instagram. I don't really fucking care. <laughs> I don't feel like looking it up to see like does he have Instagram? I never wrote anything to this dude. I never interacted with him. So he got on Twitter, and this was before. He got on Twitter and went on, um, he kind of like wrote a lot of stuff to, to fans who voted or said Donald Trump. And I don't like talking about politics. I talked about politics before and, um, and stuff. I just, I don't really like talking about it that much because it's just, again, like I said before, I'm at the point where I don't give a shit about who you vote for on on Twitter. I don't I don't care who you vote for on the presidency. I don't care what you do. <laughs> I, I I don't I'm not here. I'm like you need to vote for Trump. You need to vote for. I don't care who you vote for. Just don't vote for the fucking socialist. <laughs> I don't like socialism. Socialism, to quote my uncle, God rest his soul, it's basically how much how much you could pay for for someone else's money. It's basically you're taking someone else's money and you're paying for it. Until you run out of that person's money, then you go to the next person, then you go to the next person, then you go to the next, then you go to the next person. Until you bottom up and you're fucked. <laughs> it's basically, it's basically socialism because, you know, you you brought Peter to pay Paul to pay Simon and Garfunkel's uh you know therapist so um so he went on this crazy ass rant uh he wrote quote this is before he blocked everybody this administration is not on top of these uh, not on top of this emergency I am, I'm, I'm assuming the coronavirus they're ignoring and uh, contradicting their own statements. People are dying. And he's golfing his resort again and profiting off of it. I'm not saying fuck you for voting for him. I'm saying fuck you if you vote for him again. You wrote in all capital letters. Voice actress Susan Eisenberg agreed with this tweet. Who the fuck Susan Eisenberg is, so... Susan Eisenberg, I don't know who the fuck you are. And yet, people will vote for him again. Nothing, it seems, will change that. <laughs> oh, boy. This isn't the first time Slot went off on Trump... 
Uh, he wrote, quote, back in March 5th, I donated to E at E. Warren. <laughs> she dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She dropped out. This was five days ago. She, she dropped out. It's kind of funny, though. I guess you lost your money. Um. So. He um. He wrote quote. I donated. I donated to at E Warren Elizabeth Warren. I would have voted for Warren. <laughs> but here's the thing. Trump puts children in cages, puts his own ego before being truthful about the corona vaccination, ignore the climate crisis, self deals our money, and is shredding the Constitution. I'll vote for blue no matter who. <laughs> the hashtag. That is adorable. That's an adorable little hashtag. Uh, let's see. One person wrote, The virus is natural enemy and is the difference between singing Kumbaya together. Slot. The virus' is best friends best friends are Trump. His administration his supporters who successfully dismantled and sabotaged our best resources before clapping down on the virus. Maybe it's time to listen to the people. But who's who cares more about stopping the virus than messaging about it? He just like went on his fucking rant. Good God. He just like went on this fucking rant. It is just annoying. This entire fucking rant. <laughs> it is just... It is just like... I, I will say this. like Getting blocked by him is probably the best thing ever. <laughs> Because I would not... It's like uh, Neil Adams. Good lord. That man went on a fucking non-stop rant of all of 2019. And it's probably still going to this day. And I love Neil Adams' artwork. The One of the best Batman artists besides Capullo um, and others. Like He just went on this rant non stop to the point where people just quit following him and responding to anything and it was also like it also caused the retirement of um, what's his name the guy who did the Titans Teen Titans artwork who I forget his name shit he, of course, did, like, this whole, like, I will not be going to any cities that, you know, voted for Donald Trump. And someone posted, like, this image of, like, the entire country red in 2016. And then he, <laughs> I think he retired. It was just, like, a lot of these comic book artists and writers are so out of touch. And... It's just crazy. So, it 
it was just it's insane how you know these these writers and artists are it's just like here's the thing about it and you know I will admit like Dan Slott has not gone Mark Wade yet I don't think he would go that far I don't think he's that stupid but it's just like dude you need to calm the fuck down uh, hi hello sorry it's alright we just started. I'm like, I'm talking about um, Dan Slott, the writer for Spider-Man. He wrote for Spider-Man. Uh, he's writing for Iron Man, I believe, Iron Man, and Fantastic Four, and he blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> um, and the funny thing about... Uh, sorry, I'm talking to my Catwoman, my significant other... The funny thing about it is I never wrote to Dan Slot. I have never wrote anything to him. And this is the second time he blocked me <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, the first account I had, bam, blocked. And the, of course, the current account, block, you know, bam, blocked. Uh, he's an asshole. No, he, he blocked a lot of people. It was like a mass blockage. Of people, he he, I forget I forget what the hell they call it. They call it like a uh, block bot or something. Like he created like this bot to block people. Damn, I hate him. No, it's a it's a funny thing about it is just he uh he went on this entire fucking rant of supporters of Donald Trump, people who support Trump. And I don't know if he got the memo. <laughs> and, uh, I, I I don't really care who people vote for in 2016. I mean, and, he, and here's the thing about it. You know, like, he's one of those people who are trying to pin the coronavirus on Trump by saying that Trump is not focusing on the coronavirus instead of focusing on the economy, which... You know, Trump is focused on the economy, but he's also focused on... The people, I, I take it, the fuckers don't understand, is Mike Pence is in charge of dealing with the coronavirus. Trump said, like, Mike Pence and the uh, Department of Health and, you know, stuff is, in, is dealing with the coronavirus. People have to realize, like, there's two people in charge. There's the president and the vice president. The vice president is dealing with the coronavirus. Mike Pence is capable of dealing with it. I mean, he's not a fucking... He's not Joe Biden, for God's sakes. Joe Biden's fucking crazy. Like, he was in St. Louis, which was pretty hilarious. Joe Biden was. And... <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people who who were down there in the city really didn't care about Joe Biden and being in the city. They went to to the Battle Hawks, uh, they, not the Battle Hawks, but they went to like a, a, other events and stuff. Like people just didn't want to see Joe Biden. And Joe Biden's going to be the nominee. I'm sorry. I know my uncle who is a Marvel fan, who's a Marvel Comics fan, um, is a big supporter. Your voice got too. <laughs> is a, is a big supporter of Bernie Sanders. And I don't like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is a socialist. I don't like socialists. I am not into socialism. Socialism is a shit plan. Socialism is awful. Oh, you got two voices. Yeah, I'm echoing. <laughs> um, I got two voices. I do got two voices. Um, <laughs> I also got a cat behind me who's sleeping. So, 
So I, I bent down to like get something to drink and I put it back down. I don't know why. So socialism is an awful thing. Look at Venezuela. Look at um, Cuba. Look at China. China is in a is in fucking crazy country, and China is a shithole of a country. I'm sorry. I know there's people who love China. China is a. I mean, I like <laughs> the crazy thing about it is uh, when when we started the show, I talked about I need I tomorrow I, I'm getting a uh, memory card delivered to my house for my laptop because low disk uh, low blah, low disk space and it gets annoying when it pops up and it's just like go away <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully yeah Lola yeah she's purring she's like sound asleep poor baby she had like a rough night she was all over the place. All over the place. Running around. Going after crazy... I don't know what she was doing. Like, I woke up and all I heard was the cat meowing at me. And all of a sudden I turn... I turn over and all I see is like this black silhouette shadow of a cat. Looking right at me. Scared the shit out of me. So it's just like, so anyway, I'm getting a uh, memory card. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it, you know, I can do, do a lot of things on the computer because it, it's annoying. Cause it's like, here's the thing. Like I do two things on the laptop. I write my stories and I do the podcast. That is basically it. That's all I do. So I need... <laughs> I need that memory card to work. I paid 18 bucks on it. If it doesn't work, I'm going to fucking cry. <laughs> I'm going to be so upset. Like... Shit. <laughs> You're supposed to work. So hopefully... Hopefully it works. I... You know... I need my laptop. <laughs> if not, then... I just ride this thing out until I get a new laptop. You know, one day. <laughs> so, anyway, Dan Slot went on this cra- went on a crazy rant, um, talking about Trump supporters and stuff. And here's the thing: I am not voting. <laughs> I don't want jury duty. If I ever was picked for jury duty I'd be like he's guilty I'm done (laughs) or I'd be like Jessica Fletcher in the in the episode of Murder She Wrote where she's on the jury duty (laughs) she's there with uh, uh, Mama from Mama's Family and stuff which I love that episode because it was like the first time ever seeing Jessica Fletcher in the same room with same room with Mama from Mama's Family And I love Mama's Family. That is like my favorite show. It was my grandmother's favorite show. And I love that show. It is like, it is hilarious and funny. And like anytime um, uh, Mama from Mama's Family talked, she sounded like Mama from Mama's Family. I'm just like, she has like that distinct voice when she yells, and <laughs> I loved it. It was just like, I'm like the first time I saw it, and I heard her yell. I'm like, that's Mama <laughs> from Mama's Family, <laughs> and uh, like she is still to this, still to this day touring with that character. Like, she outlived Medea from, you know, Tyler Perry's Medea. She outlived Medea and stuff. So, and that's sad, though. Like, uh, Medea. They quit, Tyler Perry quit doing a Medea character. 
I love that character. I love the plays more than I love the movies. The movies he did, like, there's like a couple of them I like. I like Medea Goes to Jail. Good movie. Um, Medea's uh, Family Reunion. I think that was a. And Medea's. Uh, I don't care for Diary of Mad Black Woman. I know most people like it. I'm one of those people, like, I don't really care for it. I, it's kind of weird, though. Like, I didn't care for the play. Like, my favorite play he did was Medea's Class Reunion with uh, Mr. Brown and stuff. And I was surprised he never did that movie. I was surprised he never did a film adaptation of it. Like, that was a good play. Like, he played two different characters. And it wasn't Joe this time. It was, like, he uh, he played the, um, what is it? The, the dude who delivered the bags into the room. I, f- I forget what they call what they're called. Um, the bus boy, I guess, is what it's called. He he did that, and it was really like it was really cool because like anytime he played like other characters that wasn't Medea or Joe in his move Medea films, they were just boring. Like Brian, character is just boring. It is a boring character. I'm sorry. It is just flat out boring. So plain and you know and stuff and I mean he kind of made the character a bit fun like he did add a layer to it uh, and Boo Medea's Halloween one and two like he did add a layer to it but it was just like it, it was just a very boring predictable I mean it wasn't Boo wasn't boring it was a really good film. The second one was really funny um, and stuff. And I love the part where Joe <laughs> Joe meets the killers and tries to get them to go after Medea. <laughs> like, that was funny. Like, you know, so for me, it just, it hopefully, like, you know, like, it's sad, though, he retired from it. And I think he did the final play, like, and stuff. But it just, I, I, it hasn't came out on DVD or anything, and I don't think it ever will. I think it's just like one of those things where you have to go see it in theaters and stuff. And I remember they came to St. Louis, and I wanted to go see it. I wanted to go see the play and stuff, but I decided not to. You know, so it's all right, you know. So, um,. I did not get to see the uh, the film they did the Medea's uh, fam the Medea's uh, funeral or something I I, I I forget the title of it I didn't see it um, because I heard like it's just not it's not that good it's not really a Medea film it's more like centered around the other characters and instead of Medea oh why didn't I see the play um, they were sold out. <laughs> They were they were sold out like once it was like announced like it was the final Medea play run like it, they sold out. Um, I didn't see the movie because the movie was just it. I don't know what it was. It, I guess it was just like I didn't want to see it. And when I read the synopsis and the plot to it, I was just like, I'm definitely not seeing it because it's just you know the. The movie was just basically about relationships and stuff. Like, the dude who died was having an affair. And you were like, oh no. (laughs) And, like, once it involved, like, a bunch of, like, like, once, like, uh, it was like he took Viagra when he died, and now we can't keep the coffin lid down. It's just like really like you have to add that stuff into it it's, like the weird thing about it was like the Medea f- plays and stuff like it was just about family wholesomeness and stuff like Christianity and things and it became like I don't want to sound like a jerk but he kind of became a sellout once you know once Tyler uh, Tyler Perry sort of became a sellout and I will admit, I will admit, like, if I was in the same 
position as him, I would do the same thing. <laughs> That's the bad thing about it. Like, he has his own studio, which is amazing to hear that. Because the studio is also used for Walking Dead, which I did not... I mean, I knew they filmed it in Atlanta because it's where it's set, but... Like... It's just he became, like, this uh, the sellout a bit. And it's funny, though, like... The last movie I saw him in was in Vice with uh, Christian Bale. And... It's kind of funny, though. Like, he is sort of, like... It's it's funny to watch it because it's like um you see Tyler Perry right across the table from Christian Bale. <laughs> and I was just like wow. You have and the funny thing about it is and we'll we'll stop talking about Tyler Perry afterwards. I just I, I grew up watching Tyler Perry plays and the movies and stuff and I really I like I like the plays more than I like the movies. I and I like the one show, uh, House of Pain. It wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad movie, you know, bad show and stuff. It kinda got boring. It became like this this um what is the word? It became predictable. <laughs> so What was I saying? Oh, yeah. It's funny, though, because it was just like, wow, you have Christian Bale, one of the great actors of the decades, and you have Tyler Perry, <laughs> great playwriter, like, dominated a play, you know, the circuit, you know, dominated, not the circuit, but the market of theater plays and stuff. Like, he was the end all be all of plays. Like, stuff and it's amazing to see that uh, but when it comes to action movies like Alex Cross no <laughs> no this dude did the movie Alex Cross the last Alex Cross movies that were made which was let me find it I think there was three I think there was three Alex Cross Alex Cross films, I think, made. Um, let me look it up. <laughs> but there was a lot of books of Alex Cross, which is <clears throat> amazing. I never read any of the books, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> uh, let's see, the Alex Cross film series. Let's take a look. Oh, there's two. Kiss the Girls, and Along Came a Spider, which starred Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman played Alex Cross, and Kiss the Girls, and Along Came a Spider. Along Came a Spider was pretty good. Um, I actually like that one more than I like the other ones, and I'm surprised Morgan Freeman did not do any more Alex Cross. Uh, you know stuff the funny thing about it was uh, in the movie uh, Kiss the Girl uh, not Kiss the Girls but Along Came a Spider had uh, Billy Berkey Billy Berkey was in the Twilight uh, the Twilight films he played uh, he played Charlie Swan in the in the uh, Twilight films he plays the bad guy in the film. Uh, he plays one of the bad guys in the film. And, uh... It sucks what happens to him because, uh... <laughs> in the film... Yeah, Bella's dad, he played in, uh... Along Came a Spider. He gets shot in the head in, in, in the film. Like, he gets shot right in the fucking head. And I felt bad for him... <laughs> I felt bad for him because he did not get a warning. Like, here's the thing. If you're going to shoot somebody, warn them. Give them a five-minute head start. Then you can shoot them. This guy, like, like, in the film, 
he is asked by the the chick, his girlfriend, who who is working with Alex Cross, and Alex Cross knows that you know she she's involved. Like he he fucking knows it. Once Alex Cross shoots the other bad guy with a shotgun, he got shot in the chest. I mean, he kind of deserved it. I mean, he flung Alex Cross, uh, Alex Cross across the room, and he got shot in the chest. He deserved it, though. Like he, I mean, the whole, you know, Alex, you know, like the whole voice thing. Like his voice is annoying at the point where I'm just like, he deserved to die. <laughs> He has an annoying voice. It's like, clear your throat. <laughs> clear your throat, then talk. No. You have like this... And it sounds like when he talks, it's just like, did you get enough drink of water before you start talking? It's, it's like, yo, know, Alex. You know, it's like, all this thing, like... And he speaks in riddles. It's like, you know, fucking shoot him. <laughs> Just shoot him, and he gets shot in the chest, and you know by the sh- you know with the shotgun, it's like oh he ain't coming back for the third film, so he dies, and uh, the the chick takes off somewhere. Alex sort of tails her, like she doesn't know it, but you know we know he's following her, and uh, she makes out with you know Charlie Swan, Bella's dad, and and she asks him like I got the dime, did you get the diamonds? He goes I got the diamonds. She goes, good. Did you kill the girl? He goes, no, I didn't. And she gets mad. It's like, why didn't you kill the girl? He goes, yeah, I, I, we got the diamonds. We got we want. Bam! Right in the head. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you're going to shoot someone. Give them a head start. Be like, I'm going to shoot you in the head, so take off. All right, you got five minutes. You know, five minutes later, bam! You're done. But no. This bitch shoots him in the head. And I'm just like... I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, this bitch is cold. <laughs> like, and stuff. And he doesn't come back. That's what aggravated me. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> the movie's really good and stuff. And then she starts shooting at the little girl who blocked the room. It's like, what do you expect? She was going to block the room because she doesn't want to die, okay? And she starts opening fire at the room. I'm just like... And she stabs the light, which was smart, but... You know, it's it, 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 and it's like, alright, get, get out of the room. Get, get, get out of the room. And she pops open one of the boards with a fork... Uh, she, you know, popped the nail off and, you know, got through. And she meets Alex and he goes, shh. And it was just basically like, shh, I'm going to shoot that bitch. (laughs) So, they start having this Mexican standoff. Which is funny because you have a black man and you have a white blonde woman. And a Mexican standoff. And Alex takes the gun and shoots her. Then she falls down. It was like the perfect way to end it. You know, it, 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 you could tell it's like one of those old movies from the 2000s and the 90s. Because once end credits start, like, they're still walking. And I always wonder, like, where the fuck are they walking to? Like, they walk past the car, and they're still walking as you see, like, the end credits and all the credit, you know, the actors and actresses who are in the film and stuff. And I'm always wondering, like, where are they walking towards? Where are they going and it never says. <laughs> and it's le- left with your mind of like, okay, where is Alex taking that little girl? <laughs> is the parents like off, you know, the screen somewhere? Reuniting with their daughter? It's like, where are they going? And it never, it, I, it, it always left me like, where are they still walking to this day? <laughs> Was it like, alright, little girl, you go back to your family, I'm gonna go to Gotham. I'm gonna be <laughs> Lucius Fox for Bruce Wayne. <laughs> so, <laughs> this film is, it's an amazing film. And I don't know how they never made a sequel. 
If they ever do an Alex Cross movie, I don't want to see like a one-off movie like Tyler Perry did for you know Alex Cross. I want to see I want to see a Netflix series. I want to see a you know you know how they did the um the one the uh, the one films that they did with uh, Neil Patrick Harris for you know he played the guy who adopted those kids and he's trying to take the kids fortune that they inherited and stuff uh, shit what was it called it was, I, I seen the show once I watched like the first season the first two seasons of it a series of unfortunate events thank you <laughs> Lemony Snicket's a serious unfortunate events. I'd rather see that, you know, Alex Cross be done that way. Oh, there's Bane. There's a big cat named Bane. He's like he's like the size of a Shih Tzu. <laughs> big freaking cat. So he's I seen him like walking. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere he's like, Ah, I've seen my my owner put out food. <laughs> like one time I seen Bane the cat, you know. And he responds to Bane. I'm like, Bane. <laughs> Let's not stand on ceremonies here. Put the food in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway I want to see like and the funny thing about it is like Along Came a Spider was like the first book <laughs> that was done of uh, Alex Cross's stuff so anyway <laughs> oh my god, that was perfect. It is. It, it's funny though, because he, the cat Bane, will like sit there, and once he sits down, he is like the size. Like that cat is like bigger than a wiener dog. Like my neighbor has a wiener dog, like one of those you know dogs that are like you know wiener dog. That cat is bigger than a wiener dog, and it was pretty funny though. Like. I I was in the house and Bane was on the deck because I put a food bowl out there and he'll like jump up on a on the porch and the deck, you know, and eat out of the bowl. All of a sudden, here comes this yappy wiener dog. Yeah, you know, runs up the steps and starts barking. You know, all I hear is ruff ruff ruff, and Bane is sitting there. Looking at the cat. I mean, looking at the dog. And the dog is, like, barking at him. And somewhere in my mind, I'm watching this whole thing. I'm thinking, like... And I'm thinking to myself... Oh, what will break first? Your spirit? Or your body? And all of a sudden... The cat... Wham! Smacks this dog in the head... And the dog runs off the porch after, after it yelped and ran back. <laughs> this cat is bigger than the, the fucking wiener dog. <laughs> so I was just like, I love this cat. <laughs> like, I don't know why anybody would, you know, abandon that big old cat. Like, that is the kind of cat that people brag about. Like, my cat is huge. Except my cat in the house has, you know, big old belly, you know, the size of a softball. Like, I'm not kidding. Lola gained weight after she got fixed and her shots and all that. She's, you know... It's stuff, so... <laughs> So, 
Hold on. <laughs> I had to take a photo of, <laughs> of her. She's like sleeping. All of a sudden, I see her one paws up in the air. So, yes, I'm talking about your belly. <laughs> so, anyway, it just, it, it's kind of funny, though, because the, the cat is, like, huge and stuff. And, anyway, I'm surprised they have not, um, speaking of Bane, I'm surprised they haven't done anything with him. I mean, I know Bane got killed in the comics. He got shot in the head by um, Thomas and stuff. And I'm surprised they never brought the character back yet. And it's interesting because the the version of Bane that they wrote in, in Tom King's run, I I didn't really care for that version of Bane, like... You know, and of course it was revealed that, you know, Bane was the master plan, you know, the master planner behind all of it. Thomas. <laughs> and stuff. And Bane was merely a chess piece in this battle and stuff. I'm surprised they never brought, I'm surprised they're never bringing the character back yet. i kind of interested in seeing, like, you know, and, and the odd thing about it is... Bane isn't even brought up in the uh, flashback scenes with uh, the designer and all that. Like, you know, you would think that. Like, you think the designer, you know, would be, you know, somewhere. So. <clears throat> uh, Golden Age timely comics artist Alan Bellman passed away. Alan Bellman worked for Marvel when... It was still ninety. It still timely comics. He passed away at the age of ninety-five. Um, it was sad though to to hear that one. Sad to hear it. Uh, Gold Age legend Alan Bellman, who began work at Marvel when it was still known as Timely Comics, passed away at the age of ninety-five. Uh, so Comic Fest announced Bellman's death on Mar on Monday, March tenth. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, Monday is yeah, was yesterday, it was the ninth. Uh it was believed to be he was still living in Florida. Bellman was employed by a staff artist for Timely and Comics in the nineteen forties before Marvel was truly established. Some of the titles he worked on include Young Allies, The Patriot, The Human Torch, The Destroyer, All Winter Comics, Marvel Mystery. There's not much known about his personal life. Bellman maintained his own website, which had some background on him and the history he accomplished. He was born in Manhattan. He studied at High School of Industrial Arts, Bellman's bio reads. Uh, he was eventually became a staff for Timely during the golden age of comics, where while still a teenager, damn, he worked as a teenager in comics, uh, he did background for Sid Shore's Captain America in 1942. Eventually worked on titles such as The Patriot, The Destroyer, The Human Torch, Jasp, Jap Buster, sorry, Jap Buster, uh, Johnson and Jet Dixon of the Space Squadron, All Winter Comics, Marvel's Mystery, The Submariner, Comics, Young Allies, and such more. Uh, he was once he once he was made into made his way into comics. Bellman began working hand in hand with the uh, figurehead of Marvel, Stan Lee. Bellman spent his latter years touring the convention circuit, making appearances at other comics related events. Kind words and condolences put in on his death about his death and when it was announced. Wow, this dude worked in comics. <laughs> like, it's like, damn, dude. Like, <clears throat> it's. It, I'll say this: he he had a great life. I mean, he worked in comics at the, right at the golden age, nineteen forties. He worked in comics, man. Like, yeah. So,
So, Uh, speaking of Batman, ah, sorry, let's get to Batman. Uh, the Three Jokers debut uh, series released new covers. After years of anticipation, that Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok's long planned DC Black Label series, The Three Jokers, the debut on in, confirmed to debut in June. Following the release date announcement, DC released the covers for the miniseries of three different Jokers. Hmm. You got the Joker with the blue crowbar. We know where that came from. The original Joker and the Alan Moore killing joke Joker. I mean, here's the thing about it, like, I, I'm not really, I'm still on the fence <laughs> of the Three Jokers story. I am still on the fence of it. I don't know where, where I stand with it. Like, I, I look forward to seeing uh, what happens in it. And stuff like I I don't know where it's gonna go. Like the three jokers, like hopefully it hopefully it gets somewhere um where D C bounces back. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, you know, it they need to like sort of do something where the there goes Bane. <laughs> I took his food, the food he left out there. Greatly appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, in my mind, I think he talks like that because the way he like looks you know <laughs> oh boy anyway let's get to the back to the back issues I sort of like this new you know segment uh, this was like last minute where I you know was like right before the show I had to go through boxes to see what I could find for comics to talk about and stuff. And one thing I realized, I have to move my watch forward an hour. There we go. <clears throat> so anyway, so I had to, I had to, I had my watch. And I realized I did not move my, I didn't change the time on my watch. Spring forward. <laughs> so anyway, I grabbed four books from my Detective Comics bin, not bin but box. As you know, I have a, you know. I'm collecting Detective Comics because, you know, I love it because it's like a part of history. It's a part of Batman history and stuff. Once it reached a thousand, it was like, this is a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal because it's the mythology. It's where it all started in Batman. That's what I love about it. I mean, think about it. That, that, Detective Comics 27. That one book, poof, kicked off this giant universe of Batman. Think about that. That is just, that's something that I, I just look at it and I go like, if it started from that, look where it's at now. You know? It's like one of those crazy things, so. 
um, the top one, speaking of Thousand, I, I love looking at this Detective Comics 1000. I have the 1980s variant cover. I bought two copies of Detective Comics, one for my Catwoman, one for me. I got her the Jim Lee cover one. Because it's pretty cool. It's like Batman in a Batcave. And you have all the entire characters in the cave. I have the 1980s. I bought the 1980s variant. The Frank Miller, Alex Sinclair, I love you more, <laughs> version of Batman. The 1980s Miller version. And I am a huge Frank Miller fan. I... I love Miller's work. Even though I we tried doing the Dark Knight Strikes again, we will one day get back to finishing up that book. I just had to quit because I started getting a headache. <laughs> I was just like, where is this book going? Where is it going? <laughs> so, I have the Miller... You know, version. I, I, I love this cover. Like, one that I originally grabbed, I think, was the '90s version, and it was at the comic book store. It was at uh, Dark Side. And one day, I will, I will return to Dark Side comics. It sounded like Star Wars when I said I'll return to the Dark Side. You know. <laughs> Um, one day I, I will go back there. You know, I I feel bad every time I drive past it, and I go like, man, I wish I could just stop in there, but they're always closed. And I want I would love to go back there when it's like open. I could go through there and see what they got and stuff. And I was in Dark Side, and I I grabbed the nineties comic and originally like when I bought the th 1000 I was like this is going to be the, fa the final Batman book and final ba uh, final comics I'll buy for a long time and I didn't <laughs> I didn't I and I was in there I had the 90's comic in my hand and this woman had um the 80s comic. She was like looking for the, the comic cover that I had. And we um, we ended up trading like the comic. Because when I saw it, I was, like, I was like, that's the Frank Miller version cover. The variant cover of Frank Miller's you know, Detector Comics you know, 1000. She goes, yeah, like I'm looking for that one. I was like, I'll trade. <laughs> We ended up trading, and I ended up walking out with the 80s variant by Miller and Sinclair. So, I was happy with it. I, you know, that was the one the one cover I wanted, because I like Miller's version of Batman and Dark Knight and, and stuff. It's like an older Batman who's more pissed off and aggravated. <laughs> so, for me, you know, I'm happy with this one. Um... This other one I have, it's the cover is very rough. You could tell it's rough. An 80-page anniversary celebrating Batman's 600th appearance in Detective Comics. Detective Comics 627, Batman's 600th appearance in Detective Comics. And I saw this one, and I... I the cover is rough. <laughs> it's wrinkled. The uh, amazing thing about it is like none of it is the cover is not torn or anything. It's just been you know finely aged, <laughs> and it came out in March ninety one. You know it was really it's a really rough cover and stuff and. Like, when I saw the top where it says celebrating Batman's 600th appearance, 
I was just like, I had to buy it because it's pretty rare. It's a rare book. 600 appearances in the comics and stuff. And for me, it was just like I had to buy it and stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna. I want to save the, this one for the last. Batman Detective Comics 354. This one's pretty interesting because it has a villain in there. But also. It's the original, you know, print. And I spent $10 <laughs> for this book because it's a very old one. Plus, it has a new arch villain that never appeared again in comics. Dr. Zinzin. <laughs> Dr. Zinzin, the new arch enemy for Batman. The Cape Crusader's most dangerous trap. A tightening circle of human fists. <laughs> Featuring Batman's new arch villain, Dr. Zinzin. I saw this cover and I need to get a new bag and board for it because I don't know how old this bag and board is. I think it's... But I don't know what kind of bag and board to get it, but it's one of those, like, I think golden age, I think. Silver age. I don't know. Um, this one kind of made me laugh because when I saw it, I was just like, I never heard of this villain. But apparently it was new. Zinzin. Zin. <laughs> so I ended up buying it and I just, I had to add it to the collection because it was just, it's goofy, funny, and hilarious. Zinzin. Zin. This one is the oldest comic I ever bought, and I spent two dollars for it. Detective, uh, blah. Batman Detective Comics, Detective Comics, three eighteen. <laughs> this comic from Detective Comics. 318 cost 12 cents when it first came out. 12 cents when it first came out. Yeah. 12 cents. And I love the, the um, DC logo. DC, Superman's Nat Superman National Comics. This is back then when they thought Superman was like, you know, the, the big deal, the big... The big villain of it. You know, not the big villain, but the big hero for DC. Like He was the centerpiece, and it's like, really, he wasn't. He's more of the cornerstone for DC, but, you know, anyway. This one kind of made me laugh, because when I read it, I was just like, I, I like it. I, I like the cover of it. It has this is Batman on the cover. Great Scott. Batwoman has joined forces... With the Cat Man and became the Cat Woman. <laughs> the extra long Batman Adventures. The Cat Man Strikes Back. <laughs> it has Batwoman, the original Batwoman, not the Kate Kane Batwoman, the original Batwoman. Uh, let me look it up because this one's kind of interesting. It was the Golden Age Batwoman, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, it's the yeah the original Golden Age Batwoman, Kathy Kane, not Kate Kane, as we all know. Kathy Kane was the, you know, first 
version of Batwoman who appeared in Detec- uh, Detective Comics 233. She was originally introduced as a love interest for Batman when Julie, Sh- uh, uh, when Julie Shorts, editor of Batman-related comics, you know, 1964, he removed the non-essential, including Kate Kane, Kathy Kane, Batgirl, the original Batgirl, 1961, Betty Kane, who later became in comics as Flame Bird. <laughs> so, <laughs> she was, of course, created by Bill Finger and Sheldon uh, Moldoff. Kathy Kane, of course, was created by Edmund Hamilton and Sheldon Moldoff, of course. I would love to have this version of the 233, because that is a pretty cool cover, you know. Kathy Kane uh, is primarily known as Silver Age, sorry, the Silver Age character of the Bat family as Bat Woman. Hmm. Yeah, so they originally introduced her as a love interest because the uh, the novel, because of it was sort of like the you know strike back at. Seduction of the Innocent book, which was fucking dumb, you know, and stuff, so. <clears throat> they removed Batwoman from the series. The new Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, not only replaced Batwoman, but it was as Batman's female counterpart. She surpassed the original heroine in popularity. Batgirl was more appropriate for her time period, more realistic approach by DC Comics began taking... With its characters, unlike Batwoman, Bat- Gordon's Batgirl was used her utility belt various gadgets similar to Batman in addition of being, to being a skilled martial artist, possess a doctrine in, civil, a doctrine in a civil identity. Despite requests from readers to revive Batwoman, Batwoman character, DC editorial team initially declined to bring the character out of retirement considering the fact that she was specifically created to be Batman's love interest. So they removed her and said, you know, sort of replaced, uh, well, not sort of, but replaced her with Catwoman to be Batman's love interest, which was a smart, brilliant move because, you know, you need that, you know, the bad girl going, you know, being chased by Batman. So I never, like, I never really liked the original Batwoman character that much. I, I like the current version of Kate Kane. The original, you know, the current Batwoman character, because she has more of a fan base, and I feel, I feel like they don't. I feel like the, the thing about it is what aggravates me with it is they never really got to figure out Bat Batwoman for television. Now, I agree. Mm-hmm. I mean, you need Catwoman. You know, you need Catwoman in the comics and stuff. She's fun. She's a badass. You know. That's what I love about the character. Catwoman. She's a badass. And I cannot wait to see what they do with the Batman movie. I feel like, you know, Catwoman was sort of in Dawn of Justice in a way. Like, I feel like they... It's it's funny, though. I have to, like, read this one article. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Um... I found this old article. I was like, I was going through like old stuff of Dawn of Justice, nostalgia. <laughs> even though it's not that old now, even though they consider it old now. And stuff. And it's, it's the crazy thread was now that a lot of people, a lot of people are going after Wonder Woman eighty four movie. Which is weird. Um, Because a lot of people got mad over the... The story now. Like... Wonder Woman, you know, gives up her powers for Steve Trevor. So... 
so. Here it is. <laughs> this was back in 2016. This story made me laugh. Um, this is when Batman beats Rand Dawn of Justice. January 2016, Gal Gadot thought she was auditioning for Catwoman and Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. <laughs> so, this is the article. Gal Gadot might be Wonder Woman for the role. She thought she... Originally, she thought she was auditioning back in 2013. She knew it was the audition was at Warner Brothers, a movie by Zack Snyder. She went in expecting Catwoman. <laughs> Quote, I mean, I could guess. I could have guessed, she admitted to Empire. I thought I was going to be Selena, you know, Selena Kyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she wrote, I knew that the role it was... The role when I flew in to test with Ben Ben Affleck, she says I thought I was I w she said she says I was very excited. Anytime I have a journal meetings in L.A., I always said it was my dream role to be to do an empowered independent woman who doesn't rely on men. So she thought she was playing Catwoman. <laughs> I'm so happy she's not. I, I honestly, like, when I first saw um, the trailer, like, when you watched the interaction between them, I thought she was Catwoman. <laughs> but, and, you know, it was Wonder Woman. It's like, honestly, like, I agree. Like, I'm happy she didn't play Catwoman because when you look at Gal Gadot, you think, like, yeah, she's Wonder Woman. <laughs> and that's the amazing thing about it. Like, she made character Wonder Woman her her own character which is great you know like she she took the character and you know brought something you know to it and stuff and you know I you know it's great She was cool as Wonder Woman. Like, I, I'm happy that, you know, Wonder Woman round and stuff, you know. So, anyway, I want to talk about this one story. This story made me laugh. It made me laugh in a hilarious way. For those who don't know, I'm from the Show Me State, known as Missouri. I call it the Show Me State because, you know, you look at the license plate, it says the Show Me State. Here is the article, and I shit you not. Missouri man dressed as Joker arrested over a terrorist threat. I shit you not. A man dressed as Joker got arrested in Missouri. I shit you not. This story, when I first heard it, I was just like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> here is the story University City Missouri man has been taken into custody charged after dressing as the Joker making terror threats via a Facebook live <laughs> oh my I I I I could not make this story up. I, 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 I could. I can't make this up. This is. I mean, and stuff. He says, "Quote: Yes, I'm doing this for attention, but the attention I seek is to take over the world." The individual said in the video. He says, "Quote: I'm going to start killing people until this reaches a thousand viewers." Once it reaches a thousand, I'm going to go out in public. I'm going to kill more. We're not going to go 
to any movie theaters. We are going to be totally unarmed because we don't want to alert authorities into taking alert authorities into thinking we might be on an actual rampage. According to the St. Louis Post Dispatch, um, I usually read it for Cardinal News. The individual streamed over an hour. An hour. Basically, he went and saw it on this. <laughs> uh, which included putting on his outfit, attempting to go to the St. Louis Galleria and a large shopping area in the city, but was asked to leave. He moved on to Blueberry Hill, a popular restaurant in the city. Never went there. I never, I never went to Blueberry. Uh, he went to Blueberry Hill. Reportedly spotted the police outside before asking a bartender for a Sprite. That is definitely St. Louis. We do love Sprite. <laughs> we do. We love Sprite. I'm just like, this is definitely St. Louis. <laughs> we, we love our Sprite and shit. So, ah, fuck. My neighbors. Yeah, we love our Sprite. I, I wish they would bring back the Sprite Cranberry. Um, Christmas time, like they brought, they ma they released like a Sprite Cranberry, and that was really good. Like, uh, I bought the Coca Cola Cinnamon, <laughs> uh, the bottle the bottle of coca-cola cinnamon and i tried it i didn't care for it the sprite cranberry is pretty funny like my dad i am not making this up this is a reenactment of this he i was like you need to try to sprite cranberry so he opens up one and he takes you know a sip and does this Ooh. <laughs> he did that he sounded like dave Chappelle when he did Ooh. <laughs> And I, I, I was laughing hysterically, not only by the sound of that, but his facial reaction was hilarious. So, yeah, this is definitely St. Louis. We love Sprite. We like Sprite with ice. Like I, I like like if I have to get a Sprite, I want like a ton of ice in it. Ton of ice, in a fountain soda. Like if I had to get a fountain Sprite. It is going to be loaded with ice. <laughs> That's what it is. A bunch of ice in one cup. And you have to, like, break the straw down to, like, you know, get a drink. <laughs> like, that's how I roll. So, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely St. Louis. <laughs> so, let's read the comments. <laughs> I love you more. Uh, this is pretty funny. Uh, let's see. All right, he he went to get a sprite. He informed them he doesn't drink. <laughs> no shit, we could tell by the sprite, dude. Like people who don't drink, they drink sprite. Who don't drink, they they drink sprite or tea or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he says, "Yeah, I can't be in inebriated when I am pl uh, what I'm planning on." You know, killing a bunch of people. This this dude is not Joker. <laughs> this dude is not Joker material. He said, he continues on saying, quote, It's not something you can do. I'm live on Facebook right now. I've got nearly 2,000 people watching me. I am not armed. I weigh 150 pounds. You are a skinny fucking Joker then. He said, <laughs> I got no weapons on me. You're definitely not Joker. You're definitely not the Joker, dude. I'm not going to do nothing. You've got to mess me up. Expecting all these... Oh my god, he says the word bomb. The individual said before getting arrested, the individual was taken into custody Tuesday night and held without bail for the time being. Uh, here's an update. Uh, following the feedback, the community, we removed individual's photo. Oh, they removed the photo. Damn. I wanted to see the mugshot. Yeah, a lot of people here are like you know, reading this. Uh, let's see. So, my thoughts are, 
when I read this, I was just like, I was just stunned. <laughs> this one person posted a photo of a GIF, uh, a, GIF a GIF or something, I guess that's what it's called. You know, one of those videos. Uh, the Joker from Mask of the Phantasm, Mark Hamill, who says, quote, you can't you can't be too careful with all those weirdos around. <laughs> I gotta see if they have the mug shot. I wonder if he's like wearing the clown makeup and he has like the crazy hair. Let's see. Uh, Joker Saint Louis. Oh my god. They do. <laughs> Here's, I found the mug shot. Oh dear lord. He was re arrested in Blueberry Hill in the Del Mar Loop. Definitely Missouri. Del Mar Loop. I will admit, he does look like the Joker. <laughs> Especially in the mugshot. He's smiling at the camera. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway... All right, we're going to be wrapping up the show pretty soon. <laughs> but first, let's get to the final... I guess we had... Do we have enough time to do the final, you know, the story of Teen Titans Go? You know what? We're going to save it for tomorrow. Kind of... I know... I bought a new issue, so... It's kind of sad part about it is, like, reading... I don't... Part of me wants to read it, but part of me doesn't want to read it because... I want to read it because I bet I know it's hilarious, but another part of me doesn't want to read it because it's like the final story of the giant book of Teen Titans Go, and I don't want to stop it. <laughs> you know, so anyway, I, I wanted, so I ended up like replacing that with the Joker thing because once, once I heard it, I was just like, huh. The odd thing about it is, sorry, I had to burp. A bunch of my relatives were like sending me the story. They're like, "You have to see the story. It's crazy." Yeah, there were. You don't believe how many Facebook Messenger notifications I got. It was just like boom, 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 and it was the same article story and I was just like huh <laughs> you know like and all I see is like this crazy mugshot of this dude with white makeup all over his face including his hair which is pretty genius by the way that is like a new genius idea it's like Joker's all messy and stuff you know and I was just like wow <laughs> It is pretty cool, though. I mean, it, it's it's touching to know, like, if something crazy happens that involves Batman, I immediately get, like, notified by my family and stuff. And, <laughs> and stuff. And it's, like, the nicest thing to hear. It's just, like, first thing that comes to mind with Batman is we got to send it to Josh. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the craziest thing. It's like when the Robert Pattinson Batman thing happened. Bam. What do you think this is going to be like? And I, uh, you know, I end up sending the, uh, like, I created like this uh, meme photo, which is like Beast Boy and Cyborg. And Beast Boy's like looking up and you see tears in his eye playing the guitar. And it has Ben Affleck's Batman photo. <laughs> and Beast Boy goes, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> which you know at first when I heard Ben Affleck wasn't going to be Batman I was very upset about it because I was just like I am so sad because it's just like I wanted I love the movie The Town The Town is really good 
Um, Gone Baby Gone is a good movie. Gone Girl was really good. Um, I felt bad for him. That movie, Gone Girl is like scary. <laughs> that movie is like the new uh, Fatal Attraction. <laughs> and I love, anytime I see the movie Fatal Attraction, I think of Tom Hanks where... Tom Hanks basically tells his kid that Fatal Attraction scared the hell out of a lot of men in America. <laughs> Which it did, that, that movie. But Gone Girl took it to a new level. Like that, especially it's close to home. <laughs> in Missouri. <laughs> it happened, the story takes place in Missouri. And it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking like oh no <laughs> like the character Ben Affleck's character is a diehard Cardinals fan and he's framed for murder by his wife <laughs> I'm like that scared the shit out of me I'm just sitting there going like no no <laughs> <laughs> Like if that was me, if that was me, I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, I didn't kill her, I didn't. Please believe me, please believe me. <laughs> like, I'd be scared shitless. Like, you know, like at that point, I had like several thoughts in my head going, like, I'm going to get security cameras. <laughs> I'm going to get the ring video doorbell because that might save my life. <laughs> and I am recording everything. Because <laughs> that, you know, that scared the shit out of me. That that movie scared me. You know, like it, it took, it hit, it came close to home. <laughs> like, once it was like in my backyard... <laughs> the movie taking place in my backyard I'm scared <laughs> like I am just terrified <laughs> you know <laughs> and the ending of it just it's scary as shit cause you know spoiler once you find out the wife is like crazy <laughs> basically you know you feel bad for Ben at the same time he kind of deserved it. <laughs> like, you know, like, you feel bad for the guy. But at the same time, he kind of deserved it because his wife went Hillary Clinton on him. <laughs> like, scared the shit out of me, you know? Like, yeah, you know, it's the funny thing about it is, like, like, <laughs> like the, the great thing about the movie is, Gone Girl, it, it's directed by David Fincher, who is a brilliant director. Seven, um, let's see, uh, yeah, Seven, uh, he did some Nine Inch Nails, you know, music video. He did uh, Social Network, another good movie, by the way. And Trent Reznor and Atticus, Atticus Ross did the soundtrack. And for one, you know, one thing I always wanted to see was those two guys, Reznor and Ross, do the soundtrack for Batman. Like, I don't know why. Just something about it. Like, I wish that, you know, and I like the guy who's, you know, the guy who's doing Batman, you know, soundtrack. You know, reading, you know, of course I'm happy that he's doing it as well because in an interview, he, I saw a video of him doing an interview. He's like really enthusiastic and excited because he's, he's like, we're doing something new, something revolution, you know, something new that you've never seen before in a Batman film. I'm thinking like, you got my attention and my support, dude. So for me, I, I always wanted to see Reznor and Ross do the soundtrack for Batman because with Trent Reznor, it'd be like really good. Like him and Atticus, Atticus Ross are like, brilliant together like social network soundtrack is like one of my favorites um i like the uh girl with the dragon tattoo soundtrack like especially they they had uh, uh reznor and karen o 
did the uh, cover of Emigrant Song by Led Zeppelin in the beginning of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And I thought, like, man, that's really cool. And it's a really good song, by the way. That song has a lot of energy and, you know, vibe to it. And I was just like, man, I would love to see that. Like, I would love to see that in a Batman movie. <laughs> And the sad part about it was Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was a good movie, but man, it was very dark. Like, it was a very dark movie. Like, I thought it would be, like, too much for me to sit through because it was a very dark movie. Until I saw Joker and thought, okay, this is too much. <laughs> I, I love the Joker movie. It was just, like, it, it was, like, too much all at once. It was, like, a really, like unpackage storm coming right at you with emotions and stuff and realism and stuff. And it was a really good movie, by the way. But Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is a really good book. Like, I love the book trilogy that um, Lars, uh, Stieg Larsson did. Stieg Larsson did the uh, novels and stuff. And I... You know, I love, you know, the novels and stuff. The comic books are really good. I know they did the graphic novels for Girl with the Dragon. The, the Girl who played her. The Girl who kicked the hornet's nest. The Girl did a lot. <laughs> Trilogy. <laughs> um, but, you know, I I didn't like the, the new movie that they did. Uh, the Girl in the Spider Web. I, I just felt like it was kind of wrong to do a sequel to it um especially your present a, a sequel that to a novel that the um Stieg Larson did not write you know like he of course you know Larson died of a heart attack and stuff and he didn't finish um his books you know his other books and stuff that he was working on he wrote like it's kind of weird though. He wrote like, um, um, what is it? He wrote like plot outlines and stuff for it, and he didn't finish it. Like now, it's like now you have the new writer who did the girl in the spider web, the girl who takes an eye for an eye, and the girl who lived twice now, which is done by a new writer and stuff. And stuff like, for me, like, I, I don't really want to see, you know, you know, another sequel and stuff like, and the weird thing about it is like, they got like, um, new actors and actresses in it. Like you had a uh, new, two new, an actor and an actress playing the characters of, uh, Bloomquist and, you know, Lisbeth, you know, stuff like I didn't really care for it stuff so you know for me I I prefer the original the original trilogy was far more superior uh the Fincher with Daniel Craig and um what's her name she's she's uh Joaquin Phoenix's girlfriend or wife she's she played Lisbeth in it stuff like, I, I wish they, like, looking back on it, I wish they would have gotten Joaquin Phoenix to play Bloomquist, Bloomvis or something. I think that's his name, Bloomvis. I wish they got Phoenix to play that character, because Bloomvis is, like, a very complicated individual and stuff, and that would have been Joaquin Phoenix's perfect part. <laughs> and it, because Phoenix could play, like, a very complicated individual of course we all know it because a lot of people are like well we know it from joker it's like no if you ever watch the films he did like if you ever watch uh the one movie he did with uh philip seymour hoffman the master or if you watch the movie her or johnny cash walk the line phoenix is just that good at playing a very close you know force close knit person and if you ever watch The Master and stuff, like, you will literally see two of the best actors 
Philip Seymour Hoffman, God rest his soul, and Joaquin Phoenix go at it <laughs> in a scene. Like, you will see these two guys really, like, try to outdo each other in film scenes and stuff. And it is amazing just to watch that happen and stuff. Or if you watch, like, one scene, you're like, if you watch one scene, you want to see more of it, like and stuff and it's the same way as like mickey rourke and the wrestler like i i love mickey rourke's performance in the wrestler i wish they would get him in a batman film like i always thought mickey rourke would be perfect as uh, falcone (laughs) for some reason i always thought he would be perfect for that part but if you ever watch uh if you ever watch an actor make a comeback watch the wrestler like you will see mickey rourke play this you know this guy who is kicked and damned and abandoned by everybody which was basically mickey rourke's career like this guy went from acting to boxing and once he got beaten down in boxing to the point where he had to go back to acting no one wanted him. Like, you've seen this poor guy get kicked around and made fun of by everybody. And you see this guy just show everybody that I still have it in the movie The Wrestler. And it's perfect. It's it's a really good movie. And it's the same way with, um, with Hollywoodland. Like, Ben Affleck played this actor who is, you know, he played George Reeves in Hollywoodland. Again, same way. Good movie. Like, I... It's one of Affleck's comebacks in a film. And Affleck played this... Basically, he played the same... Is He's basically playing a guy who had the same career as him, in a way. Like, you see Affleck just broken, knocked down, made fun of in Hollywood, after doing bad film after bad film after bad film. And you see him make this comeback in Hollywood Land and stuff. And it's the same way with The Way Back. Like, The Way Back, I think a lot of people are excited for it because you're basically seeing Ben Affleck play Ben Affleck. <laughs> a guy who dealt with depression, um, alcoholism, just trying to put his life back together. And that's, you know, it's basically, I think, why a lot of people are excited to see it. You know, so. Anyway, it's it's exciting to see that, and it's the same way with like, um, you know, it's the same way. Like, I think why a lot of people have hopes for, you know, this movie, The Way Back, and stuff. And it's it's odd. It's funny. It's weird enough because, you know, it's amazing to see actors play these parts and stuff. And Philip Seymour Hoffman was such a good actor, and anytime, you know, I always thought, I always think of like, man, what would he be like if he was in a comic book movie? (laughs) And if there was ever like one character I always thought Hoffman Hoffman could play, would be Penguin. Like, as much as I want to see like uh, Toby Jones play the Penguin, Philip Seymour Hoffman would have been fucking phenomenal as Penguin. Like, you would see this guy be, you know, evil. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I have to wrap up the podcast. I, I'm i talking too much. <laughs> and I, you know, had to hop off here and do other things. So, uh, we, we'll be back tomorrow. We will do a new episode Wednesday. So... Uh, I think I went like over. <laughs> you are great. You are great. Thank you, love. I can't believe I kind of I, I was like rambling incoherently about the wrestler, which the wrestler would make you work. I recommend. Um, <laughs> other things, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I recommend the movie The Wrestler. Uh, the master i do recommend that one highly i highly recommend it if you're ever fascinated with religious cults 
Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. That is like the unofficial biography of Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard. That is a good movie, The Master. I highly, highly recommend it. It's it's a great like two hour over two hour movie. You will see like exquisite not I wouldn't say exquisite acting because when I think of exquisite acting I think of bad acting but you will see phenomenal acting in that film and writing and directing so I recommend that one and Hollywoodland Hollywoodland as well so anyway uh, I will be back tomorrow we will. We'll, we will honestly read the Teen Titans Go Giant. Um, talk about more crazy things. Uh, see what new books are out for Wednesday new books and back to the back issues and all that. So we will be back tomorrow. You were amazing. Thank you, love. So anyway, I will be back. And don't forget to wash your hands because, you know, coronavirus is out there wash your hands with soap and by the way i gotta mention this one we like i I forgot to mention like hand sanitizer they are out of (laughs) stores here in missouri so wash your hands twice show me state we don't have hand sanitizers i bet we will see them at yard sales and shit so (laughs) anyway i will be back tomorrow